Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we are doing more Ideas and Opinions by Albert Einstein. First piece we're going to read is called Joseph Popper in Chaos. Um, apparently the man was born in 1838 and died in 1921. He was Austrian and by profession engineer. Famous as a writer for his pungent criticism of state and society and for his courageous program to alleviate social evils. Some of his books were banned in Imperial Austria. Um, his statement appeared in Mein Weltbild Amsterdam, Querido Verlag, um, 1934. Popper Linkaeus was more than a brilliant engineer and writer. He was one of the few outstanding personalities who embody the conscience of a generation. He was drummed into us he has drummed into us that society is responsible for the fate of every individual and shown us a way to translate the consequent obligation of the community into fact. The community or state was no fetish to him. He based his its right to demand sacrifices of the individual entirely on its duty to give the individual personality and a chance of harmonious development. So Einstein talking about the influence he had um, he received from knowing about the man, uh, Joseph Popper Linkaeus. Next piece I'm going to read is called Getting to Know, or Getting to Bernard, George, Greeting to George Bernard Shaw. On the occasion of a visit to Einstein's, of Einstein's to England in 1930, this message was published in Mein Weltbild Amsterdam Querido Verlag, 1934. There are few enough people with sufficient independence to see the weaknesses and follies of their contemporaries and remain themselves untouched by them. And these isolated few usually soon lose their zeal for putting things to rights when they have come face to face with human obduracy. Only to a tiny minority is it given to fascinate their generation by subtle humor and, and grace and to hold the mirror up to it by the impersonal agency of art. Today I salute with sincere emotion the supreme matter, master of this method, who has delighted and educated us all. So... Yeah, it's just talking about, um, Einstein's just talking about how he feels about Shaw, you know, and kind of, uh, thanking him for challenging the world as most understood it. And the last piece I'm going to read, this is a bit long here, but it's not too bad called In Honor of Arnold 
Berliner's 70th birthday. From the Naturwissenschaften, volume 20, page 913, 1932. Berliner, a German physicist, was editor of that week weekly from 1930, 13 to 1935 when as a Jew he was deposed by the Nazi regime. Seven years later at the age of 80 about to be deported Berliner committed suicide. I should like to take this opportunity of telling my friend Berliner and the readers of this periodical why I rate him and his work so highly. It has to be done here because it is our only chance of getting such things said. Our training in objectivity has led to a taboo on everything personal which we mortals may only transgress on quite exceptional occasions such as this. And now, after this dash of liberty, back to the objectivity. The area of scientific investigation has been enormously extended, and theoretical knowledge has become vastly more profound in every department of science, but the assimilative power of the human intellect in is and remains strictly limited. Hence, it is inevitable that the activity of the individual investigator should be confined to a smaller and smaller section of human knowledge. Worse still, this specialization makes it increasingly difficult to keep even our general understanding of science as a whole, without which the true spirit of research is inevitably handicapped in step with scientific progress. A situation is developing similar to the one symbolically represented in the Bible by the story of the Tower of Babel. Every serious scientific worker is painfully conscious, conscious of this involuntary relegation to an ever-narrowing sphere of knowledge which threatens to deprive the investigator of his broad horizon and degrades him to the level of a mechanic. We have all suffered under this evil, without making any effort to mitigate it. But Berliner has come to the rescue as far as the German-speaking world is concerned, in the most admirable way. He realized that the existing popular periodicals were sufficient to instruct and stimulate the layman but he also recognized the necessity of a well-balanced periodical directed with particular care for the information of the scientist who desired to familiarize himself with the development in scientific problems, methods, and results in such a way as to be able to form a judgment of his own. Through many years of hard work, he has devoted himself to this object with great intelligence and no less great determination, and done us all, and science, a service for which we cannot be too grateful. It was necessary for him to secure the cooperation of the successful scientists and induce them to say that they had to what they had to say in a 
form as far as possible intelligible to the non-specialist. He often told me of the battles he had to fight in pursuing this objective, describing his difficulties to me in the following riddle. Question. What is a scientific author? Answer. A cross between a mimosa and a porcupine. Berliner's achievement was only possible because his longing for a clear, comprehensive view of as large as possible an area of scientific investigation has remained so strongly alive. This feeling also drove him to produce a textbook of physics, the fruit of many years of strenuous work, of which a medical student said to me the other day, I don't know how I should ever have got a clear idea of the principles of modern physics in the time at my disposal without this book. Berliner's fight for clarity and a comprehensive view of science has done a great deal to bring to life in many minds the problems, methods, and results of science. The scientific life of our time is no longer conceivable without his periodical. It is just as important to make knowledge live and to keep it alive as to solve specific problems. So yeah, in that specific part, Einstein's talking about how he feels Berliner has contributed to science and really helped improve it and make it more open to not just scientists. But that'll be it for now. As always, educate thyself, think, read, study, learn. Someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, later.